Welcome to the first ever edition of Fat Travels in Northeast Arkansas. This is Fat Travels. I've decided to focus episode one on an area that I've spent 11 of my 34 years in. Northeast Arkansas. Not Little Rock, not Hot Springs, but a couple places called Paragold and Jonesboro. As a kid, I bounced back and forth between the mega metropolis of my birth home in Los Angeles to these smaller rural towns in Arkansas where my dad's side of the family is from. As much of a city person as I am, there's no denying that southern cooking helped shape my taste buds. Biscuits and gravy, Boston butt, deer meat, squirrel, frog legs, all the different kinds of fish were all part of my upbringing thanks to my dad. I wanted to spend a little time talking about the food in this area because there honestly isn't really anything that showcases what's here. Paragold is about 25 minutes slightly northeast of Jonesboro with a metropolitan population of 44,000. The town is mostly known for factory work, used car sales, has an abundance of banks and churches, and like most smaller towns in the U.S., Walmart is central to the local economy. There's not much for entertainment, just a movie theater, an old bowling alley, and a few bars. For food, you can find barbecue, homestyle cooking, catfish, Mexican, Asian, sushi, burgers, pizza, buffets, and of course the usual fast food and chain restaurants. The first place I'm going to show you is Dog and Suds. There aren't many left anymore, but if you can find one, you gotta grab their root beer, specifically. This place has been here for 60 plus years, and you can tell. While you're here, you might as well pick up a chili dog and some fried mushrooms, or try their Salvadorian stuff. Just up the street by the railroad tracks is Hamburger Station. This little stand has been here for nearly 40 years, and is definitely a local favorite. Say hi to the hamburger statue. There's plenty of options to choose from on their menu, but what they're most known for are their hamburgers. Get the tater balls with it, trust me. The cherry shake is where it's really at, though. Yeah, look at that. Tasty. I'm gonna open up this little hamburger here. Got some onions, got some cheese. It's all ooey gooey. Yeah, look at that fat piece of meat. She sure is pretty. I'm gonna stick her in my mouth hole. There we go. Yeah, get that bite. Juicy. Not of approval. Yep. This town was established in 1883 and was named after J. Gould and J.W. Paramore. There's a historical society that unfortunately wasn't open while I was here. One thing I know is that my family has been in the general area for a good century. I moved away after 8th grade in 2001 and I've periodically come back for visits ever since. Gotta see the friends and the family, you know. Speaking of friends, I met some over at Feisty Bees. Just off the 49 South. I got the piggy mac and some fried green tomatoes. Make sure you come hungry and not having just had half a hamburger though. Next up, we're gonna pop into the Dodgers gas station and get some chicken on a stick, a couple pizza sticks, and a fried pie. If you know, you know. Midnight cravings. I tried a new place called Avocados Grill and got Alpa Store tacos, but I had to ask for the pineapple to be on it. I didn't go on this trip, but I can't forget the barbecue shack and their ridiculously good shack fries. Literally mouth-watering goodness. Obviously there was no way I was going to hit every place in one week, so here's some other places that I have either been to or places that I've heard a lot about that you should be checking out. Places like 7th Street Market, Don Jose, Casa Brava, Lemonade Grill House, Pancake and Waffle House, not to be confused with Waffle House. Goodman's, Carlos Street Tacos, and of course, Kimono and Akira. During my trip, I was taken down to Jacksonport, which has a really nice park and camping area, but even more up my alley, a lot of history. There's a museum showcasing the little town's past, and more significantly, its relation to the Civil War. I recommend going if you never have. I never knew anything about the place, so I'm happy I was able to go. There's books and merch you can buy down in the lobby, and any questions you may have about what's there can be answered. I had my own personal tour guide, and we were the only ones in there. I never made it inside the old courthouse, 
but you are able to go in if requested. Like I said, it's worth going to. Jonesboro, the larger city, is located about 45 minutes northwest from Memphis, Tennessee, with a metropolitan population of around 124,000. Like Paragold, it's an industrial town with a lot of factory work. There are more entertainment options and even more food spots. There's also a fantastic park called Craighead Forest Park that you're going to want to go to. I didn't go during this trip, but Mama Sang is my favorite sushi place in NEA. One place I did try was Hero. I got some pretty outstanding tuna tataki, crawfish nachos, the crazy roll, and the Kentucky roll, all of which I would get again. Last March, just after COVID hit, the Turtle Creek Mall was hit by a devastating tornado. The demolition of a huge chunk of the mall was underway while I was there. Jonesboro was incorporated in 1859 and overall has a more diverse culture of people and ideals. There's even more history in the development of this town, and unfortunately, an infamous school shooting before Columbine happened. A previous tornado had severely damaged Jonesboro in 1968. There's two major hospitals, St. Bernard's and NEA, clubs, smaller venues for bands to play, and Arkansas State University, the home of the Red Wolves. The local news station, Region 8, formerly known as KIT, is located here as well. I was taken to a place I didn't even know existed, J-Towns. It had a very cool college-like atmosphere with good food. They have an extensive menu and it all looks bomb. I ended up getting the garbage fries loaded with all the good stuff. And the Texas dog. Threw some barbecue sauce on it to complete it. Yeah, look at all that. Sour cream, jalapenos, cheese, beef. Yeah, it was pretty good. The uh, Kraft macaroni kind of threw me off for a bit, but for whatever reason, it worked well with the meal. I have no complaints at all. One last place I was taken to was B.A. Burrito, which isn't too dissimilar from Chipotle, Qdoba, or Moe's. I got a pork bowl on a bed of rice, mushrooms, pico, green sauce, and cheese. Other places to check out are Fuji, Ron's Catfish, Partovi's, Demo's Barbecue, Los Taqueros, 1812 Pizza, and Skinny J's. Between Paragold and Jonesboro, I know there's dozens more eateries to try, but I'll just have to save all that for a later episode. Thank you for watching this first episode of Fat Travels right here in Northeast Arkansas. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Stay tuned for episode two.